Hi everyone and welcome to this workshop series on branding. My name is Chris Converse and today we'll be taking a look at a variety of ways that you can apply fonts to your creative projects. We'll be creating paragraph and character styles to help us format type more efficiently. Then we'll share those styles across the Creative Cloud apps using libraries. I'll also show you how to get a jumpstart on your projects using templates from Adobe Stock, where more of the time consuming aspect of creating a variety of type styles is already done for us. So we can focus on making modifications and then adjusting the design to match our brand. Then we'll take a look at how to activate Adobe fonts for use on websites, for use in email or any other digital campaign. And finally, if you have a special font you wanna use for your brand, I'll show you how you can load your own fonts into Creative Cloud. So I hope this sounds interesting. And if so, sit back and watch me demonstrate these workflows for you. Or if you'd like to try some of these features out for yourself, you can download the project files and follow along with me. Now, if you're gonna be following along with me, there's a couple of applications that you'll need in order to use some of the project files. So the first thing you'll wanna do is make sure you're logged into your Creative Cloud, either through the website or through the Creative Cloud app. Then we're gonna be using a couple of different services. We're gonna be using Adobe Stock, Adobe Capture. We're going to save some of our character and paragraph styles into Creative Cloud libraries. And of course, we'll be using fonts throughout the entire workshop. And then the project files contain an InDesign file and an HTML file that you can edit in Dreamweaver. You can also edit the HTML file in any web editor. So the InDesign file is gonna give us a chance to work with character and paragraph styles. And then we'll take a look at activating fonts for a website. And then throughout the workshop, I will make references to other Creative Cloud applications that have very similar workflows. And so with that, let's continue on with Adobe Capture and start saving type styles to our libraries. Now in the last workshop, we talked a lot about using Adobe Capture to find and be inspired by fonts in your environment. So what we're gonna to do today is combine Capture with Creative Cloud libraries. So I'm gonna start by launching Capture on my phone. Now in here, what I wanna do is load an image that I've already taken. So I'll come up here and tap on type to put this into type mode. Then down in the lower center buttons, I'll tap on this image icon. I'll go into my Creative Cloud, into my branding workshop. Then I'll load up this image that I took of some hand lettering. I'll come down and tap open. Now I'm gonna come in here and define the type that I would like to find something similar. So I'll tap and drag the selection icon here to make sure it encompasses the entire word ice cream. Tap on the check mark. This is gonna send that pixel data up to Creative Cloud. Creative Cloud's gonna come back and show me all of the fonts that match that or are similar on the Adobe font site. So I'm gonna start by choosing change text. I'm gonna type in ice cream here. I'm gonna tap done. Now I'll see the image at the top and I can scroll through. So I'm looking for something that I can activate on fonts.adobe.com. So as I go through here, I like this one here. So I'm gonna tap on the check mark. Then I'll tap on save. We're gonna call this hand lettering. Then I'll come down and change the library. I'm gonna choose the coffee house. The coffee house client that we're working with is actually gonna start serving homemade ice cream for the summer. Tap on save, and now that character and its properties are gonna be saved into my Creative Cloud library. So now let's go back to the desktop. I'm in Photoshop here and I'm working on a sign. So I'm gonna come up here to the window menu. Let's come down and open our libraries. Inside of my libraries, I'll switch away from Altera Athletics. Then I'll open up the Coffee House Library, and I can come down here and see the font is showing up with the name that I gave it and a little preview. Next, I come over here to the Layers panel. I'll select this text layer here, Homemade Ice Cream, then come back to my library and apply my type style. Now on the canvas, I can see that taking effect. I'll hit the letter T to switch into my text tool. I'm gonna select all the text. Then I'll come up here and I'll increase the size of the font. Then I'll select all this and I will increase the size of the letting as well. I'll go over to the properties panel. This is 182 on 37. Let's change this to about 140. Extend the size of my text block down. And then I can come in here and make some minor adjustments to the tracking between some of the letters. And so as you can see, we can quickly capture fonts through our camera or fonts that are inside of photographs, identify them, save them to our library, and then quickly apply them to our creative projects. And so next we're gonna talk about how we can create our own character and paragraph styles based on fonts that we've already discovered and activated through Creative Cloud. Now we're gonna take a look at creating our own character and paragraph styles, and we'll do this inside of InDesign. Now the workflow is gonna be very similar in tools like Photoshop and Illustrator as well, any application that supports creating these types of styles. 
So to begin, we're going to go into our project files if you'd like to follow along. Then inside of the brand guide folder, I have an InDesign file. This is our working draft of our brand guidelines. So let's open this up. Now inside of here, if I use shift page down, I can go through the different pages here. So what we're going to be doing is changing the style of the headings in the top left corner. So I'll stop on one of these pages here. I'm going to be changing this text here in the upper left. So what we're going to do to begin is we're going to make sure that nothing is selected. Come down to the paragraph styles and hold the option key on the Mac or alt in windows and click on create new style. What this will do is create a new paragraph style and give you all of the options showing up in this dialog box. Otherwise we would just get a new paragraph style and we'd have to double click it to make changes. We'll start by giving this a name. We'll call this heading a make sure that based on is set to no paragraph style. There are some really cool things you can do with basing styles on other styles or doing nested styles. But for today's example, we'll just keep this simple. Then let's come over to basic character formats for the font family. Let's come in here and choose Termina. That's going to be one of the font families that we're going to be using for this brand down for the font style. Let's make sure this is set to heavy for the font size. We're going to set this to 36 points, hit tab, and we're going to set the letting to 32. Then let's come down and set the case to all caps. And then one final setting, let's come over to indents and spacing and let's come down here and let's set the space after to 70 pixels, then click OK. Now with those created, let's come back into our content. I'm going to double click into this text block, select the word colors. Then I'll come down here to the paragraph styles and select heading A. Now with that selected, I'll come up here, select my direct selection tool and then click away. Then hit page down to go to the fonts page, select the word fonts and let's apply heading A here as well. Now, once you've applied this, you can hit the escape key to escape out of this page down. Let's go to the next page. Now, another nice thing with paragraph styles is you can simply get your cursor inside of the text. So on the next page, let's get our cursor inside of the word logo lockup. And without selecting the characters, we can still come down and hit heading a hit the escape key page down. One more way that we can do this is to get our cursor in one of these characters, hit command or control return bring up your quick apply and inside of the quick apply, you can come in here and select it here as well and then hit escape. So I'm going to continue through and we're going to apply that new style to all of the headings throughout the document. So we're on the last page here. So page up, page up again and again, one more time for mission. Let's apply that hit escape and then page up again. We're back at the main cover. So now we've created a new paragraph style and applied it throughout the document. Now let's go back to the pages where our content is on a red background. So for this, we want to create something called a character style, which will apply some properties to the individual characters while still keeping the properties of the paragraph style. So to do that, let's come down to the character styles. Let's come down here, hold the option key and create a new character style. And in the character style here, let's come down to character color and let's choose paper. Then click OK. I forgot to name it. So let me double click this and give this a name. I'll name this white, click OK. And now what I can do is come down here and select the entire text block. And with the entire text block selected, I'll come down here and select the character style of white. Notice now when I have the individual paragraph style selected, I can see here that the body is being used and I don't see a plus sign, which means I have no overrides for that reverse color. And I can also come up here and select the heading and see that here as well. So now let's go page down two more times, select this. We're going to apply the white character style there as well. So using paragraph and character styles gives us a really efficient way to apply consistent typography throughout our document. And so now at this point, we're going to take a look at using templates on Adobe stock where a lot of this work has been done for us. And we can simply go in and make modifications to the character and paragraph styles that are already created. So now that we've taken a look at creating our own paragraph and character styles, now let's take a look at something that can really help you get a jump start on your workflow. And that's something called templates. So from my Adobe homepage, I'm going to come in here and go to the Adobe stock site. And on the Adobe stock site, I'm going to change the main filter to templates. And in here, I'll just type newsletter. I'll select this from the menu, press return. And this search will return all of the templates available around creating newsletters. Now over in the left hand side, I can open up this filter. And we can see in here, there are a bunch of different file formats that you can download, including Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign. And by the way, if I come up here and remove that filter and just press return, 
you'll also see Premiere Pro and Premiere Rush. These are motion graphic templates, and we're going to talk about those a little bit later in this series. So for our newsletter, I'm going to come up here and hit the back button and just go back to that search. You can see all the different newsletters down here. Here's one that I've already licensed. So if I come in here and click on this, I can see the details. So this is an InDesign file, and I can re-download this. Now once I download this, if I come over here and reveal my desktop, you'll see the InDesign file showing up here, the INDT file, which is a template. And so now if I double click this, this will open up a new untitled document inside of InDesign based on this template. So here we can see all of the content in here. All of the pink areas are meant for me to either put in graphics or change colors. I'll come in here and zoom up on page one. You can see the content in here. And then I'm gonna hit the page down holding shift and I can just sort of go through all the different pages of this template. So there's lots of pages in here, lots of stuff already set up for me. But what's most important, if we look over here in the paragraph and character styles, we can see that all of these character styles and paragraph styles have been set up for us. So all of that more tedious work has been done, and we can simply come in here and make some changes. And so now I'll jump over here to a newsletter that I created based on this template. And you can see this can look dramatically different when you start adding your own fonts and content. And so what I want to do is come in here and make a change to the way the headings are styled in here. Now the great thing is the headings were all styled consistently. So if I page through this, I'm looking at this gray type here. I want to come in here and change that property. So what I'm going to do is come in here so I can see multiple instances of that text. I can see it here and here and here. So if I come in here and double click and select some characters inside of InDesign, I can see in the paragraph styles this heading item will highlight. So this lets me know that that's the style I need to change. So what I'll typically do is make sure I have nothing selected inside of InDesign, then come over here, double click on that headings style, and then come in here and make some changes. So I'm going to come in here first and come down to basic character formats. I'm going to come in here and change this to alternate gothic. That's the font that we use for this particular brand. So as soon as I select that, you'll see that that changes all throughout my layout. It even changes in here where there's a character style, changing that to be white like we did earlier. Now, if you don't see your layout updating, make sure that you have the preview checked over here on the bottom left. So I'm going to come in here and make a couple of additional changes. So for the size, I'm going to come in here and set this to 36 points. I'm going to set the leading to 34. Let's come down here to character color. I'm going to come in here and set the color to blue. And again, I'm watching this the whole time. And then I'll go back to the basic character formats, come down to case and set this to normal so that I'll take away the all caps. And once I like the changes, I can come down here and click OK. And now if I page through my document, I can see that that type has been consistently changed throughout my entire newsletter. Now at this point, we've talked a lot about finding fonts, activating fonts, discovering fonts. But one of the things that can be a little challenging is trying to find exactly the fonts you need to activate when you're working on a project. Now there's two ways you can manage your fonts. You can do it directly through the fonts website. You can come up to my Adobe fonts. And in here, you'll see a list of all of the fonts you have activated. You can even see fonts that you've activated for a web project, which we're going to be talking about as well. Now, if I scroll down, you can see all of the fonts that I currently have activated through the website. You can also manage your fonts going to the Creative Cloud desktop app if you're on a desktop computer or going to the Creative Cloud mobile app on your phone or tablet devices. Now, in the Creative Cloud app, I can come down to Manage Fonts. And again, I can see a list of all of the fonts that are activated for this device. So now I'd like to show you the auto activation feature inside of Creative Cloud. So in order to do that, I'm going to come over here and open up two different files on my desktop. First is inside of Photoshop, and this is going to be using a font called Ephra, which I do not currently have activated on my system. So I'm going to double click and open this file. And if you look at the little icon showing up in the lower right hand corner of the type layers, you'll see the little activation symbol rotating. This is letting you know that Photoshop detected that font and is now automatically activating it for us. If I come up here to my Creative Cloud app, go into my activated fonts, you'll see Ephra is now activated, both light and heavy. So I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to deactivate this. I'm going to close the Photoshop file. And now I'm going to come over here and open up a similar project inside of Adobe XD. Now inside of XD, you'll see that there was a missing font showing up over here on the left-hand side. And after a few seconds, XD was also able to contact Creative Cloud and then activate the font. And now with the font activated, I can come over here and preview the project that I'm creating inside of XD. And you'll find a very similar workflow across many of the apps inside of Creative Cloud, allowing you to simply just open the project, have the font activated, and then you can get to your design work. 
Now the workflow for activating a font for a website is a little bit different than what we've been doing so far. So from the Adobe site, I'm gonna come in here to my apps. Let's go over to the fonts.adobe.com website. Now in here, when you browse your fonts, if you see a font with this little icon next to it, which most of them will have this, this is an indication that I can add this to a web project. So if I scroll down here, maybe pick this font, click on this little icon here, this is gonna bring up the web project dialog box. Now, so what this is telling me is I can take all of these fonts and I can show all of them here and I can add any one of these to an existing web project or create a new project. In this drop-down menu, if I click on this, I can click on this link here and create a new project or I can add this to an existing project. If I choose Altera Athletics, which I've already created, I can come down here and sort of cherry pick the individual fonts I'd like to add into that existing web project. So I'm gonna hit cancel here, scroll up to the top, and let's go over to the Typekit web fonts. On this screen here, there's a button right here at the top that says My Web Projects. This will show me all of the web projects that I've already created. And here I can see Altera Athletics at the top. If I come over here to the right and choose Edit Project, and in here I can see a live list of all of the fonts that are activated for this project. And I can come in here and turn any one of these on and off. Now I'll scroll back up here, I'll close this detail view, and what I wanna do is come in here and copy this line of code. Now there's two ways you can add a font to your web page. You can add this in HTML, so we would add the link tag here into the HTML file, or we can switch over to the import link and you can import the CSS right in your CSS file. I'm gonna choose the HTML option. So I could come up here and select and copy this, or I can come over here and click on this little icon here, which will copy that to my clipboard. And now with that copy to the clipboard, I'm gonna go back to my project files. I'm gonna open up the web page folder, and in here I have an HTML file along with a CSS file and a web graphic. So let's open that index.html file up in a web editor. I'm gonna choose Adobe Dreamweaver, but of course you can use any HTML or text editor to follow along. And so now with this file opened in Dreamweaver, I can come over here and in the HTML, inside the head area, I'm gonna come in here and paste that line of code before my style sheet. So after my title tag, I'll hit a return, hit Command or Control V to paste in that CSS, hit Command or Control S to save. And now inside of Dreamweaver with an HTML file open, you can see a list of all of the files that are hooked in or linked into this HTML file. So the first link here, this is actually the web font that's coming over from Adobe Fonts. We have another reference here that's coming from Adobe Fonts, and then we have our style sheet here. If I come back over to the website, you'll notice that that file name matches my project ID. So to preview my work so far, let's come down to the live preview. I'm gonna open this up in Chrome. I'm gonna open this up in Chrome, and now there's a live link between Dreamweaver and Chrome. So if I came in here, for example, and added maybe an exclamation point, you'd see that show up right away in the background here. You'll also see that I have some fonts enabled already. So let's come up here and take a look at the style.css file. Now if you scroll down through here, you'll see all of the CSS rules that I have in place. And here in the HTML selector, you can see that I've already added the reference for Termina. Now to get the exact property names that you need, let's go back to the website. Let's come over here and edit the project. If you scroll down through here, you can see all of the properties that are available. So I'm gonna come up here under Ethnocentric, and you can see it tells me what the font family needs to be set to. So I'll select this and copy it to the clipboard. I'm also gonna come over here and pay attention to the font weight and the font style. So for light italic, the font weight is 300, and the font style is italic. And you can also copy these properties like we did before. So now back in Dreamweaver, let's scroll down. I'm gonna find the H1 selector here. I'm gonna hit a return, and we're gonna paste in that line of code. That's actually referencing this Altera Athletics heading here. Let's hit another return. Let's add another property. We're gonna add font style. So I'll start typing the word font. I'll use the auto completion, choose font hyphen style, and we're gonna set this to italic. One more return, we're gonna set font weight. So font hyphen, type in W, font weight, we're gonna set that to 300. I'll save my file, go over to the browser, and now we'll see that that font is loading perfectly. And so now that this is working locally on my machine, I'm gonna come back to Dreamweaver, select both of these files, I'm gonna push these up to my web server, then I'll bring up another device, I'll bring up my phone, come up here and hit reload, 
And now I can see that those fonts are now loading on my phone as well. And now I know that those fonts are being served to anybody who's looking at this page. Now one last feature that I want to show you around Creative Cloud and fonts and font management is the fact that you can load your own fonts into the Creative Cloud application. So when you have Creative Cloud application running, I'm going to come down to Manage Fonts. And on this screen here, there's the option to add your own fonts to Creative Cloud. If I click on this, this is going to show me all of the fonts that I've loaded into my Creative Cloud. Now here you'll see that I've already loaded a bunch of versions of Helvetica. This is one of the fonts that we use for our own company branding. So if I take you over to InDesign and take a look at our business card, for example, you'll see that if I select some text, we can see that this is running Helvetica. So this font is now being activated and managed through Creative Cloud. So as long as your font is in an open type format and you have a license for it, you can use Creative Cloud to manage that. So now let's go back to the Creative Cloud app and I'll show you how to do this. So I'll come over here and click Add More. So now I can find those font files on my hard drive and just drag them right into this window. So I'm going to come over here and grab both of these, Lithos Pro and Aiken Standard. I'll just drag them right in. I'll see them listed here. And if I don't see any messages, I'll know that the font format is acceptable. And so just to show you what that would look like if you drag in a font that is not compatible, I'll drag in a font called Spider Shank. This is not in an acceptable format. So I can come over here and click on the X. So once I have my two fonts ready, I do need to verify that I own a license for these fonts. So I'll check this box and then come over here and click Add. Now Creative Cloud is going to upload those files, evaluate them, and set them up so that they can be managed through Creative Cloud. Now in some cases, the font that I'm using is already available in Adobe Fonts. So I'll get this message here that says it's unable to add. But it tells me that this is already available in Adobe Fonts, so I can load the font and activate it, just like we've been doing throughout this entire series. And over here, I can see that Aiken Standard Bold has been activated and it is now installed. So I'll come over here, click on the ellipsis, click Remove, then click Remove again, and now I have Creative Cloud managing this custom font for me, and I can use this on any application installed on this device. So now we've completed this workshop by creating type styles that we can share across a multi-page document, across Creative Cloud apps using libraries, or across the world by assigning fonts into a web project that can be served to all of our digital campaigns. Now we're ready for the next workshop where we'll finalize our logo design by creating a unique mark with the amazing drawing tools inside of Adobe Illustrator.